How's it going? Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today on our 2019 Jeep Cherokee, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Demco Second Vehicle Kit for Air Force One Supplemental Braking Systems. There's going to be five main components needed to flat tow your Jeep Cherokee down the road. They're going to include your base plate, your tow bar, your braking system, your tow bar wiring, and your safety cables. Your base plate is going to attach to your Jeep's frame and give us a really solid and reliable connection point to hook our tow bar up to. The tow bar is going to be that link that goes from your base plate to the back of the motorhome and allows your vehicle to pivot behind your motorhome as you're going down the road. Your braking system is going to apply the brakes in your Jeep whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome to help bring everything to a safe, complete stop. Your tow bar wiring is going to connect to the back of your motorhome, to the front of your Jeep, and that's going to help provide the appropriate lighting signals on the back of your Jeep. That way other motorists will know what your intentions are as you're going down the road. And lastly, your safety cables are going to connect to the back of your motorhome, again to the front of the Jeep, and they're going to be a secondary attachment device in case of the event of a catastrophic disconnect, these cables are going to keep your Jeep connected to the back of your motorhome. Now, if you've been flat towing and already have an Air Force One on your motorhome, and you end up purchasing a new vehicle or even having another one that you'd like to flat tow, the Air Force One secondary kit is going to allow you to do that without having to go through the trouble of purchasing the entire kit. This is just going to come with the things you need to set up your second car. So this is going to work just like the original Air Force One, however you're not going to have to change or install anything on your motorhome side. All the components will simply get installed on the Jeep, and then you'll hook the Jeep up to the motorhome using your airline as well as your breakaway switch. So the braking system is still going to be proportional, which means however hard you hit the brake here inside the motorhome is how hard the brake will be applied in the Jeep. So it's going to make for a smoother stop. So whenever we hit the brake pedal on our motorhome, it's going to apply the actuator cylinder in a Jeep, compressing its brake pedal. Now the kit's also going to come with a breakaway switch. So in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, this pin is going to pull out of the switch, and that's going to apply the brakes in the Jeep, help bringing it to a safe stop. And it's also going to come with an indicator light that you put by your rear view mirror, and what that's going to do is every time the brake pedal is applied inside of the Jeep and you're flat towing, it's actually going to illuminate and that's going to help keep an eye on things, especially if your RV happens to have an observation camera in the back. You can make sure the braking system is functioning as you're driving down the road. Now something minor that I do want to mention is that the kit is not going to come with an airline that runs from the front of your Jeep to the back of your motorhome. So if you don't have one, or you'd rather just have two, one for each vehicle, this is something you're going to have to pick up separate. But overall, this is a great way to get your second vehicle or your new vehicle flat towed down the road without having to go through all the trouble and spend all that time to set up a whole entire complete kit. Now with this kit, since there is only a handful of components, it isn't going to be extremely difficult, but it still is going to take a little bit of time. Speaking of which, Let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're first gonna start by mounting up all of our main components. And to do that, we're gonna be underneath the hood. The first component that we're gonna mount is our main operating unit here. So underneath the hood, on top of our fuse box cover is where I mounted this. I mean, it's gonna be really easy to get to, but not in the way of anything either. So the way I did that is on each corner of our box, there's gonna be a hole and so I just marked those out and took the cover off, used a drill bit to drill through it, and then just secured our operating unit to the cover using some zip ties. Moving on to the front of our Jeep, we can then mount up our breakaway switch as well as our air fitting. Now obviously our fascia is removed and I chose to leave it off after I put our base plate on for this specific reason. It just gives us a lot more room to work and make everything a lot easier to get bolted up. Now our breakaway switch, I just mounted that 
uh, to the bracket that came included with our base plate. And the air fitting, I actually just had some brackets laying around that I used to attach to our bumper beam here to get that secured. Now, if you need some brackets or find one that'll work best for you, we do have plenty of choices here at eTrailer.com. Now, if you move over here to the driver's front seat underneath the dashboard by our brake pedal, we can mount up our actuator cylinder. Now, the way we do this, because the brake arm is much thicker than your traditional style arm, is actually we replace the bolts here that come pre-attached to our bracket with the included longer ones. So that's the first thing you're gonna do. And then you're gonna put the cylinder, clamp it to the brake arm. And what we're looking to do is the wire coming out of the back of the cylinder it's going to go to an anchor which needs to get attached to the firewall so when you do this you want to make sure to get this line as straight of an angle as possible and it may look a little crooked as it's sitting in this resting position but that's not really a huge deal what you're really wanting to do is when your brake pedal is being applied and for example, I'll just pull back on the cylinder to kind of pull that slack out. That's what you're looking for. You want it to be straight as possible when the brake pedal is being depressed. Now when you set this up, you're going to want just a little bit of slack in the line in the resting position. So you should just barely be able to pull that cylinder back. And what I've done to secure the anchor to the firewall is it comes with some self-tapping screws but what I've opted to do is actually just drill a small hole and get a small nut and bolt and actually run that bolt through this opening here and put a nut on the other side and that just gives me a little more peace of mind knowing it's that much more secure. With our actuator in place and all set up we can then take our reed switch which will have some black wiring on it and a little connector here. Now the way this works is it just slides in to this plastic and then there's going to be a small little flathead set screw that you'll have to tighten down so that you'll just push this in until it stops and then just lightly tighten down that set screw. At this point we can move on to our indicator light. Now this is pretty straightforward. It's just a little light here that has some wire attached to it and I actually opted to mount it um, to this plastic a mirror cover. I just think it has more of a cleaner look to it. But the way this is mounted it, is it just has some sticky tape on the back of it. So we'll just peel off that backing paper, clean off the surface real well, just push it in place. Now the wire coming out of the light does get ran over to the driver's side floorboard area. So I'll show you the path that I took to get there now. So to hide and route our wiring, what I've done is just run it up along through our mirror cover. And so you can kind of just take your fingers and push it in between that opening. Then it comes up here along the edge of our glass and our headliner. Again, you can kind of just push it in to the opening. And then when I got to the corner here, what I simply done was just push it into this gap here where the plastic meets our headliner. Ran it along through there, all the way to the edge here. And once you get to this point, all the way down, if you kind of just peel back your weather stripping some, there will be a decent sized gap that you can just follow that wire all the way down. So it's going all the way down behind her weather stripping until this gap here where these two pieces of plastic meet. And I simply just ran that wire behind it, out this piece of plastic, and it ends up dropping down right here where your left foot ends up resting while you're driving down the road. So while we're down here, at this point, you can get some of these wires hooked up. And a couple of them are going to get ran through the firewall into the engine compartment. But as far as hooking them up goes, it's pretty straightforward. Right here, the brown, black, and blue wire, those are going to be coming from our reed switch on our brake actuator cylinder. The 
red and black one here, those are coming from our indicator light. The first one we're gonna do is this blue wire from our switch on the actuator cylinder. That's gonna go into one end of a butt connector. And then what we're gonna do is take some extra wiring. I used white wiring here, but there is some other styles of wiring available and you should have some extra in your kit as well that you could use. But I connected this white wire to the black wire coming from our indicator light and crimped them into the other end of our butt connector. Now the red wire from our indicator light is going to get connected to the black wire from our reed switch. Again, I just use a butt connector to get those two connected. The brown wire from our reed switch, one end is gonna go in a butt connector. The other end, we're gonna take the included long brown wire and crimp that into it. Now the white and brown wire that we've added, those are gonna get ran up through the firewall. So if you kind of peel your carpet back down here by your brake pedal, there's actually going to be a hole that's already pre-made from the factory. In our case, it just had some thick black tape covering it up. So I was able to just take a screwdriver and kind of poke a hole in it to give us the opening that we need. So I ran those brown and white wires through there to the bottom side of the Jeep, as well as what I've done is take the nylon air tubing that's included and push that through the opening as well. And now would be a great time too since we're already underneath our dashboard, is to just connect the end of our airline tube that we ran through the firewall to the fitting on our actuator cylinder. Now this is really straightforward. The way it works is the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make a nice clean cut on this airline tubing. You can use a tubing cutter or a really sharp utility knife. I'm gonna be using a tool like this that has a razor blade on it. The one thing you don't want to use is a regular pair of your traditional style snips. So you're going to want to make a clean, swift cut. And what we're looking for is we want the edge to be really nice and straight and smooth. So that's a really good example of how that cut should look. Once it is cut, how it plugs into the fitting is it simply lines up and you push firmly down on it and then you can just pull back up on it to make sure the line is secured in the fitting. And so just to give you a better idea, if you go underneath the Jeep, this is what it's gonna look like on the other side of the firewall where we ran our wiring and our airline tubing through. So here's where our wiring and our air tubing came up through the firewall. And what I've done is just secured it using a couple zip ties and ran it down along through the side of our fuse box. Now we'll go ahead and go through each wire and airline at a time. The first one we're going to go with is the white wire. So this white wire is actually a ground wire. So we're going to have a factory ground stud on the body of our vehicle next to the negative side of our battery. So what I've done was I took that white wire and added on a included ring terminal, removed that nut using a 10 millimeter, and then I was able to slide the ring terminal on and tighten the nut back down. Now, once you have the white one on, before you tighten it down, there is going to be a, another black wire that comes out of our operating unit that's also a ground. So now would be an excellent time to attach a ring terminal to that as well and ground it out at the same location. And these are the two wires that I talked about coming out of our box. And this one is the one that's going to our ground post. Now it does not matter which one you're going to use. Either one will work just fine. Now, as far as our airline goes, this is the airline that is coming through our firewall connected to our actuator cylinder. And you're gonna connect that into the fitting on the main unit that says air out. 
Now when you connect this, you want to use that same sharp edge to make a nice clean cut. Works the same way, push it in, pull it out. And I do want to mention too, with the wires and airline, anything that's attached to this box, you want to give yourself plenty of extra length. That way, if you ever need to take your fuse panel cover off, you still can and just move everything out of the way without having to disconnect it all. Now the brown wire and the other remaining black wire coming out of our control box, these are gonna get connected to our breakaway switch wiring. So let's go ahead and show you the path that I took to route our breakaway switch wiring up here into the engine compartment. So our breakaway switch wiring is going to be this blue wire and this orange wire with the black stripe. And I simply just ran this towards the driver's side of our vehicle through this opening here and this plastic. Then I kind of just followed some of this factory wiring. And there's an opening here where you can push it up into the engine compartment behind our headlight. And so right here through this opening is where it comes up. So the blue wire, that's going to get connected to the other black wire coming from our control unit. And I just used a heat shrink butt connector to do that since it is outside underneath the hood. Just gives us a little more protection. The kit doesn't come included with these heat shrinks, but if you'd rather use this style over the provided ones, you can find them here at eTrailer.com. Now the orange wire, this setup's gonna be a little bit different. What I did was, Took a larger heat shrink buck connector, tied that orange wire in with the brown wire that we ran through the firewall a moment ago. So I tied them two together and then just put both of them into one end of that buck connector. Now on the other end of the buck connector that we ran our orange breakaway switch wire as well as our brown wire to, we're gonna take the included fuse holder get that connected to it and attach it to the positive battery terminal. So the first thing you wanna do is open the dust cap, make sure the fuse is not installed like it is here. And we're going to cut that in half. Then we're gonna strip back some of the insulation on both ends. And twist those wires together nice and tight. And so one end, we're gonna put that into the buck connector and crimp it down. And on the other end, we're gonna take a ring terminal, slide that over, and crimp that down as well. Now at this point, if you did use a heat shrink buck connector, you can come back with a heat source to get that all sealed up. So this is what our heat shrink looks like after you put a heat source on it and it seals up nicely. So now where the other end of our ring terminal is going to go, that's going to attach to our positive battery terminal. Now I just took our terminal off the battery completely. Uh, that way we don't have to worry about anything happening when we're completely installing our whole system. But so what we'll do is kind of run that over and I'm gonna take this nut off here, which is a 10 millimeter. I'm gonna break that free. And we'll just simply slide that ring terminal over, which I'm actually going to switch those two around. And simply just tighten that nut back down. Now we're not going to put the fuse in it just yet. We're going to get everything connected. Attach our terminal here to that battery itself. And then we'll come back and install our fuse into the holder. Now we're gonna have another air fitting here, and that'll be labeled air in. So I took a piece of nylon hose, cut it nice and straight, 
This will get attached there. Get it centered. Push it all the way in. Give it a quick tug out to make sure it's not pulling out. On these styles, a little bit of movement in and out is acceptable as long as the hose itself isn't pulling out. Now this is gonna get ran down to the front of our Jeep where our air fitting is. And this is the path that I took to get there. I just ran it down along through here, through that same opening and path that we took earlier to get all of our wiring up. So here's where that air tubing comes down and it just plugs into the fitting here. Again, same setup, you simply just cut nice and straight, push it down and pull out to make sure it's completely seated. So now we can focus on getting our vacuum port all hooked up. And this is actually going to have a line come off it that tees into our vacuum line that goes to our brake booster. So it'll give us a little more room to work if you remove this engine cover and this simply just pulls up and just set that over a little ways. And this vacuum line here that runs to the back of the intake manifold, we'll go ahead and take that off. So you can kind of just grab it and work it back to disconnect it. And from this point on, we can kind of pre-assemble all of our fittings off to the side because it'll make it a lot easier to get everything connected. The first thing you're going to do is cut off two two-inch pieces of hose like we have here and push them over our check valve. So these will simply just push on over the fittings on the ends of our check valve. Now on the check valve, one side's going to be black, one side's going to be white. You're going to want this black side to face towards the engine. So this side will be closest to the intake manifold. From there, we can take our T-fitting. And again, you're going to want to put the T-fitting on the hose on the side that has the white portion on our check valve. And we're going to push this fitting into the hose. You can grab it. and just kind of run it down. Until we get some good coverage over the T-fitting, like that. From there, what we're then gonna do is take our long length of hose We're going to take one end of it and this end is going to connect to the T portion on the fitting. Again, so we'll just grab the hose and work it over our fitting. Now keep in mind this fitting is plastic and these hoses do fit tight which is a good thing, that way we're not gonna have to worry about leaks or anything. But you don't wanna really force or put too much pressure on this plastic, that way you don't accidentally crack it. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're kind of working all these together. So from this point, how this is gonna work is this side is going to simply push on the fitting on our intake manifold. And on the other side of our T, the vacuum line that we disconnected from the intake is going to fit onto that end. Now, since we are adding some length here, what we might have to do is kind of trim off some of this vacuum line just to give us some more room. So we'll kind of go ahead and test fit it. Get that pushed on. What I wanted to do is kind of go ahead and eyeball our vacuum line here. And indeed, we are going to have to trim some off. That way, it'll fit nice and clean. So 
So with all that connected, this long piece of hose, that's actually gonna go to our operating unit. So here's how I ran our length of vacuum line over to our main unit. Now this line isn't just going to plug right into this fitting. We are gonna to have to add another check valve. And so with this check valve, what you're gonna want is the black portion of it to face towards our operating unit. So what I've done is just cut off another two inch piece of airline tubing and we'll push that over the check valve. And then we're gonna be able to kind of eyeball the length that we're gonna need here. We can cut off an extra vacuum line. Again, and you're gonna to wanna to give yourself a little bit of slack, that way we can still pull up our fuse box lid. So the other end, the white portion of our truck valve, we can push into a long vacuum line. And then this is just simply going to push on to the fitting coming out of our operating unit. Now one thing that I like to do is once you have everything hooked up is just come back to all of our attachment points here and just use some zip ties just to add a little bit more security. And finally at this point we can go ahead and reconnect our battery terminal. And once I have this tightened down, you can go ahead and take the included fuse, put that into the holder close up the dust cover. And what I like to do before I go back and kind of clean up and tidy all of the wiring is actually hook up to your motorhome and test it to make sure it's working properly. And once you've verified that, then we will sort everything out, clean it up for a nice clean look. And so this is what underneath our dash looks like once we've cleaned everything up. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Demco Second Vehicle Kit for Air Force One Braking Systems on our 2019 Jeep Cherokee.